in the book of Luke, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be turning there to the 20th chapter of the book of Luke. And then we want to start out in verse 9. Uh, there's a parable there that we wanted to be sure that you're familiar with. That we'd just like to make a few comments on and, and uh, encourage you if we can. I know we, uh, we should be encouraged from God's Word, so this should encourage you. Uh, not what I say, but what I read, uh, because it's true. I said, thinking is telling about these things that's happened to me this, this week. I, uh, I was trying to study, and, and I, I wanted to go and, uh, to the book of Matthew, the uh, Hebrews, and uh, study a little bit. But the scripture says there that I'll never leave you, you know, forsake you. Amen. And uh, I'm just thinking this. Huh. Brother Trevor was praying. I need a flood every week. Yeah. I need a flood every week. I'm the Lord. No merciful God we got. Amen. All right. Chapter 20 of the book of Luke in verse 9. We'll see this parable that Jesus is speaking or as he is, is going to speak to the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and uh, uh, they had they had already they had already uh, if you would aggravated him and and, uh, and kind of perturbed him a little bit I'm sure because uh, they asked him uh, as he was teaching in the temple there by what authority do you have what by what authority do you do these things and uh, this is why that this brought on uh, this parable but he says here in verse 8 and Jesus said unto them neither tell you I neither tell I you what authority I do these things then began he to speak to the people this parable a certain man planted a vineyard and led it forth to husbandmen and went into a far country for a long time and I believe this morning people that this uh, this parable is uh, uh, is concerning the Jewish nation. I believe that uh, the Jewish nation, according to God's word, had turned their backs on him. I believe this morning that uh, as we see the mistreatments that were done to the prophets and to Jesus Christ Himself, that uh, this was this was His way of saying this is by this is my authority how I do these things, but. They were blinded by the, the, the God of this world and they couldn't understand it. And so here we see Jesus talking to them about a certain man that planted a vineyard. And I, I tell you this morning as I was trying to study this a little bit, I looked at this vineyard as the law that he had presented to the Jewish nation by, to, by Moses. And Moses had presented to the, to the people this law and had... And the law was that you, you do the things that are written down and that you serve God through the law. And of course, I believe this morning that the vineyard is a type of Israel. I believe that he had planted Israel there and, and they, these were the apple of his eye. And he, he wanted this to be the nation that would, that would, would carry on and do, and do the law. But we know this morning that they failed miserably. Uh, there was uh, uh, a, 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 a division there between all of them, and one would say one thing, one would do another. But he said here uh, that uh, this vineyard was planted, and I believe in one of the Gospels it, it says that one of the things that was put in there was a tower, and there was a hedge put around this temp uh, around this vineyard, and God put his this hedge around this. Uh, vineyard or around Israel to protect her and he put that tower out there where that they could they could go up into this tower and see and watch for the enemies that would come or for the wild animals that would come to destroy this uh, uh, vineyard which being a type of, of, of Israel the nations would, 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 would try to come in and to destroy the, the country of Israel and we know this morning that God always protected Israel as long as they would as long as they would obey him but when certain times came 
listen, this this hedge was tore down. The Man. the the whole uh, 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 thing in the middle of it was tore down, and uh, there was nothing left there for Israel, and they went into captivity. And I believe this is what he's tell, trying to tell these people this morning that. God had the authority to do this, and God sent him, and he has the authority to do what Amen. he will, and to say what he will, and to teach what he will. And so we see here then that he said, a certain man planted a vineyard and then left it for, and led it forth to husbandmen, and went into a far country for a long time. And of course, again, we're saying that he left, he left, he left everything to Israel and for them to use this law or to use this vineyard. And at a certain and at a season he sent his servant to the husbandman that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandman beat him and sent him away empty. Now, uh, this is a type of during uh, Moses Moses' reign, and of course we know that that uh, as Moses was up receiving the law, even then, as he came down there, they were worshiping the calf. Right. And uh, the golden calf, and they were worshiping it and, and using it as their God. And, and we see here that, that, that uh, even at this time, God was so angry that he said, Moses, I'll raise up a nation for you. But Moses, in his, uh, uh, in his, goodness and his meekness and his understanding I pray that God would not do these things but right. Moses said hey uh, but God said to Moses hey I'll remember these I'll remember this but this this thing here of these husband and beat them and send them away all those prophets all those prophets during the 400 years under the law they would come to those to those people and they would prophesy to them and they would tell them these things and listen they were a disobedient hard-hearted people and they would not listen and so he says here again in verse 11 and again he sent other servants and they beat him also and in and, and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty and so these are the things that he's asking for the fruits of the vineyard or the fruits of the law and the fruits of the law were obedience and they had to obey these, these, these laws in order to stay in, in the will of God. And so we see here that uh, in, in, in the law, and in, in in I believe it is in Romans, I wanted to read a little something to you concerning this obedience. In Romans 5, if you would, if you want to turn or just listen, uh, but I, I'd like to read this to you. If I can get there to it. And 5 and verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where, the, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace even through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I want to read something else up here. Look in, uh, in, uh, in 17 if you would. In verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. And we know this, this being Adam. Much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign by the life by life by one Jesus Christ. So we see there is a there was the Adam there was the Adam curse and there was the 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 grace of Jesus Amen. Christ. And so here again we see for and and I, I want you to see this because a lot of people say well there's many not all. Well up, up here at 18 therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation they were all guilty because they all inherited it there was no way to get into this world without being tainted with sin through the birth of their mothers and so he said here even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life and so we see here this morning that the, the guilt that Jesus Christ died the gift for it was that uh, the same way that the, uh, the law, if if all would have kept the law, all would have been 
uh, made whole, but the thing of it was, the law could not give life, and right. the law could not excuse, and the law, all the law would do was say, if you don't do it, you die. And so here, we see here, so in verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, talking about Adam, many were made sinners, many were made sinners, so by the offense of one shall many be made righteous. And by the dying of Jesus Christ on the cross, many will be made righteous. Amen. And listen, people, I, I, I don't put words into the, the Bible or anything like this, but we know this morning that all will not be made whole right. by the dying of Jesus Christ on the cross because we have an example. Right. We have an example, and so we can say that it, it, it don't mean that all will be saved, and all that he that he actually knew that Judas Iscariot would betray him. We, he knew of others that would never bow their heads to him. So uh, he says uh, uh, there that the, of one shall, uh, for, by the, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Amen. And so getting back to our lesson this morning in this thing with the law, the, law, the fruit of the law was obedience. If you, and and, and uh, that, that was the only, only way that, that these people could please the Lord is obeying the law. And we know that it was, that, that it was not, it didn't happen, uh, they could not, uh, because being in the flesh, they, they could not, eat, but there was still a way made for them. But a better way was made by the way of the cross through the man of Christ our Lord and Savior. Now, on, uh, on again, uh, after he had sent this one, and in verse 12, and again he sent a third, and they wounded him also and cast him out. And probably if you studied the Bible close enough, you'll find some of those prophets that were uh, even like uh, Isaiah. Uh, I believe he was, uh, he was killed. He was, uh, one was, had his head cut off. One was uh, done some other way, but they were, they were, they were mistreated. And, and these were the ones that were coming to these people under the law and preaching to them and saying that you need to keep the law and that you need not to forsake uh, the law. But here in verse 13, then said the Lord of the vineyard, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. And we know this, the, the Lord of, is the, the, the God of this, of, uh, of heaven. Uh, he said, I'll send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves saying, this is the heir. Come and let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours. And we know this morning from the studying of God's word and history that Jesus Christ was the heir. Amen. Jesus Christ was the son of God. And Jesus came to them. He came to the Jewish nation. He came to them and, 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 and telling them the truth. They rejected him. Uh, and finally, they crucified him. Right. Finally, they killed him. And this is why this morning that we can we can read about this vineyard. We can read about some of the things that happened there, and we can see the the things that will come later after this vineyard is destroyed, because God's word tells us. Now, in verse fourteen, uh, uh, in verse fifteen, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, after they said, let us kill him. So in verse 15, so they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others. Now this morning, we are glad that we can see this thing here as clear as we do but the word others. Listen, and we know this morning that Jesus Christ came to this world and he offered, offered the Israelites grace, or he offered Israel grace, uh, the teachings, and they rejected it. Right. And he came unto the Gentiles and he offered grace. And through 
the studying of Cornelius and through Peter and through all those, we know that they accepted the, the grace. Amen. Uh, we see the vision that Peter had concerning the, the, the grace of God upon all. Uh, and, and we know this morning that we are the recipients of this vineyard. And the vineyard is no longer law, but the vineyard is grace. Amen. Thank the Lord, it's grace. And by grace, we don't have to keep it. We don't have to keep no law. By grace, we are laid free. By grace, it's free. And it's free to us. And all we have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he was the Son of God and that he did go to the cross of Calvary and he shed his blood on, on the cross of Calvary for us. And that blood, that blood is the atonement for our sins. Amen. That blood did not do away, that blood did not do away with sin, but the thing of it, the precious thing that it did do, it covered it. Amen. It covered it. And sin, sin, sin is something that, that was created, and listen, sin is still on the rampage in the lives of people today. And you know, we, we sometimes, we get caught up in things, and and we, we worry and we cry and we carry on. And listen, people, we just need to come back to the Lord. But sin is still on the rampage. And the thing that's so wonderful about this is, uh, and I see it more and more all the time, when that blood, when that blood came down out of Jesus and, and, and went down, hit out his side, listen, it covered, it covered it. It Man. covered sin. It did not, it did not do away with it, but it covered it. Now the thing of it is, when we have, when we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, it is it it covers that sin that is in us. Listen, that that sin of the flesh is still there, but that spirit, it's covered. And when 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 God looks upon us, He does not see sin. He does not see it, people, because listen. I know this morning that God's word teaches us that He that that God cannot look upon sin. And so this morning when people when people try to talk to you and tell you that uh, that that uh, that you can't be saved and all this, listen, that's that blood is has covered that sin. Amen. And 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 and, and it's it's gone. Because when it when God looks and when, when Jesus presents when Jesus presents a prayer to, to God, and I believe it's this way, when he presents that prayer to God, he is he's sitting there to the side of him and when he presents that. Listen, he cannot when he when he tells him God, he says, This is mine, and my blood has covered him. And when God looks upon him, he sees no fault, people. He he sees no fault. Talk Amen. And so that that's that's what happened with salvation. That's what happened is that you are you are that old that old that old sinful thing that old sinful thing. It can't be cleaned. It can't be cleaned because it's a permanent thing. It can't be washed away. You take you take a it's a stain, and you're stained with that sin. And you 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 that wash clothes and all this. You think about. When you get a, 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 a an old garment that's got stain all over it, and try to wash it, and you hang it out, and it's still stained there. Listen, you, it's something that you can't wash out, and that's the way our souls was. It was stained permanently until Jesus Christ came and shed His blood on the cross of Calvary, and that blood completely, completely <coughs> blotted it out. It covered it, and now when God sees that. And he looks at that and he says, well done. That's, that's, my, that's my son because he don't see nothing wrong with you. And praise God, that blood has, has covered that sin. And he don't see anything wrong with you anymore. And listen, you've got the right this morning, if you, if, you, if you don't know it, you've got the right to go to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask these things of him and to tell him your problems and to ask him to help you with the, with the things that's going on in your life. Right. And you've got that right. And listen, he, he wants to hear from you because he knows that you've got problems mm -hmm. and, and he wants to hear from you. And he wants you to tell him 
your problems were that that when when he takes care of them, then you know what happened, and you can give him honor and glory. Amen. Him something, you see, and so this morning, this is some of the things that I saw in in this in this thing here. But he he says here that he here that he will come and and destroy destroy everything that is is sinful. And now people. We're going home. Amen. We're fixing to leave out of here. And it may not be today and it may not be tomorrow, but it might be. Amen. And I don't know. It may be a thousand years. I don't know. But the thing of it is, listen, you're covered, if you're saved, you're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You no longer, you no longer are a candidate for hell. And you should be able this morning. To praise God and to shout in the heart and thank Him Amen. for what He has done for you, and 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 that you you need to remember these things because listen, that devil he wants he wants to interfere with you. He wants to tell you, hey, all ain't well with you. But listen, you can tell him this: I know that God is my Father. Amen. And I know that Jesus Christ is my brother. And I know that Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for me and telling me, or telling God, what I need and how to protect me and to watch over me and to keep me safe. And, and that don't mean that you ain't going to stump your toe or, or fall on your face sometime. But listen, he's always there. Amen. And you, you've got him. And you should, you should praise him. You should thank him. You should praise him. And you should thank him this morning for the thing that you have this morning. Everlasting, eternal life in heaven is your home. When Amen. You leave this world. And there's, there's, no, there's no imps in hell. There's no devil in hell. There's no nothing that can prevent that. Amen. Because that, <laughs> that soul, it's got Jesus Christ's blood all over it. And he don't see no sin. And he says no sin can enter hell. So hey, you got a free shot. You're going home. Amen. And I hope I hope this morning that this will encourage you because listen, that's the way it is. I believe with all my soul and body that I've told you the truth this morning about the, the love of Jesus Christ and and the vineyard. Because he, he gave them the chance. Amen. He gave them the chance, but they rejected it. They rejected it. So Thank you all this morning for your attention. I hope that the Lord will continue to bless. And pray for the church. Pray Amen. for the church. Amen. Brother Larry said about us, we need other help. We do. We need help. And only God can send that help. And so this morning, pour your heart out to God. Talk to Him. Because you talk to Him. Amen. Uh, Sometimes we feel... <laughs> but listen, hey, you can talk to Him just like I'm talking to you this morning. Amen. You, you, you be bold about it because, listen, you've got the right to be bold because you've got the blood of Jesus Christ shed across on your, on your soul. That's right. right. Amen. Thank you all.